very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Tuesday edition of the show. It's the first show for the year. I think Happy New Year is still in order. Thanks for joining us on the show tonight. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Let me quickly introduce my partner in the Lagos studio while I also expect uh, my co-anchor Austin to join me from London. But let me quickly introduce uh, our partner in the Lagos studio, Kenny Idris, joins us. Uh, Ken, first time I'm seeing you in the year? Yeah. Happy New Year. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, first time I'm also seeing you this year, and it's a big, big Happy New Year. We, um, I think for me, the you know catch is, is going to be a blessed year. And um, if there is any way you want to start, or one of the ways you want to start the year, is to talk in, is talking sport mm -hmm. on you know Channel Sports Tonight Show. So uh, I feel good to be here. All right. We feel good to be here. We feel good taking you on a trip across the money spinning world of sports. There's a lot to talk about uh, on uh, sports. And, uh, of course, just while we're talking, Austin has made a grand appearance. All right. So let's allow him into the show. Austin, it's good to have you join us as we take this ride together. Okay. All right, uh, we'll sort that out and uh, they'll join us uh, later on as we move on to uh, the show. Okay, a very interesting thing we want to talk about is the African Cup of Nations. Let's just notify our viewers officially, just in case you don't know, five days to the biennial tournament, the Africa Cup of Nations. Just five days uh, is going to be held in Cameroon, just uh, next door neighbors, but it's five days to go, uh, approximately one week to Nigeria's first game in the competition. It's going to be against the Pharaohs of Egypt. But as far as the competition goes, it's five days to uh, the tournament. So that's it on your screen. Five days to uh, the start of uh, the Africa Cup of Nations to be held in Cameroon. And a lot of Nigerian fans hoping that after this tournament, we'll probably be saying um, four titles for Nigeria. We currently have three. And uh, we've lost in the finals like four times. Um, so hopefully, hopefully uh, we will, um, you know, be lucky this time and go very far. It's part of all the challenges that we have. All right. So let's uh, move on, Idris. Let's talk about the Super Eagles. They trained on Sunday, trained yesterday. Uh, the camp is buzzing now. Just, just a few players being expected. But, but so far, so far, using Nigeria as, you know, Speaking, starting from Nigeria and looking at the African Cup of Nations, are you feeling the balls? It's, it's five days to go. Yeah. Are you really feeling it? Yes, um, I, I'm feeling it. Um, I'm African and I'm here uh, following every uh, tidbit. Then, if you say you're not even feeling anything that has to do with the AFCON, the back and forth clubs and country, mm -hmm. you know, releasing African footballers, I'm sure for like a month now, you must know must that there is the stories. AFCON about to come. Even if you stay in South America, you stay in, uh, you know, North America, you would understand. Uh, why, why are all these players and the coaches and the, you know, management administrators talking about we'll release them, we'll release them. What happened is the AFCON that is to happen in January, February. And that started <clears throat> the old buzz, you know, when it comes to controversy on one side, but elder controversy, I must say. Then the players traveling, uh, who are the players released, team list started coming out, and a whole lot of heads started turning. Oh, this guy will be part of the team. This guy will be playing for this team and all of that. Some people don't even know some players are proper Africans until they so, got the mm -hmm. call up. And they're like, oh, we'll be missing them, but at least we know where he's from now. He's from Africa. He has chosen to play for this country and he's coming down. Look at the case of the Arsenal captain. Stripped off the captain, lost his place in the team. But immediately the you know, windows were open for you to travel down. He got straight down to Gabon. Let me join a team where, you know, I'll wear my captain's band and I'm sure of being part of that team. And those are some of the balls. I'm already feeling that as a Nigerian, it started from the talk of who is to come, who is not to come, the kind of area of stars that we have. Some people will say, probably we overbeat this. Uh, we don't have players so, so in that eye. But I'm looking at the Premier League. We've got so many players. The League One, we've got so many players. The Spanish La Liga, we've got so many players. The German Bundesliga, we've got players. And also, you know, the Serie A, we've got players. So if you're talking top All five right. leagues, so we, we, we we're ready. The boss is already okay. here. All right. Kelly Idris says he's feeling the boss. All right. Uh, let me go to my partner on the show. He's waiting. He's ready. And uh, he joins us now. 
Greetings to you, Austin. I think I should say Happy New Year. First time we're seeing ourselves in 2022. Happy New Year to you. And like I said, always good taking this ride together. Yeah, I mean, it's appropriate. It's good to be on the show. Happy New Year to you. And of course, our viewers from different parts of the world. Uh, it's going to be a sport in 2022. I feel it already. And uh, we've already gotten into it with the show. Five days to the Africa Cup of Nations. And just like um, Idris said, yeah, it seems we're beginning to feel it now. Like now I can tell that the AFCON will go on, you know, and I will get it to see loads of preparations. In fact, the Atlas Lions of Morocco, they've had two training sessions in, in Cameroon, you know. Uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria camp is looking good as uh, this afternoon, I think about 23 players in camp. Uh, we're still expecting more, we're waiting to get more updates as regards Odion Hialo, if he's going to be part of the team. But we're hearing that um, Akiwo Miyamoto has been put on standby. So, yes, the AFCON is upon us. We cannot wait to see the best of African football. Whether or not, some people like it or not, we're going to use the AFCON to celebrate African football, African heritage, and then to some level tell the world who we are through football. All right. So uh, our viewers already know the direction we're going on the show tonight. Uh, a large part of the show will be dedicated to the African Cup of Nations. Special emphasis, special focus on the Super Eagles of Nigeria. We're going to be doing that. We're going to talk about Nigeria Professional Football League as well as we move on. And guess what? After all the drama, Novak Djokovic is going to be at the Australian Open after getting some medical exemption. Some some players not happy. <laughs> some some other players not happy mm -hmm. about that. Uh, Britain's Jamie Murray says. If it was me, I'm not sure I'm going to get that, but I'm happy for, for Novak. We're going to talk about that. I'm resisting the temptation to go straight into that, but we'll try to find time to talk about uh, Djokovic. How he kept us all waiting, and at the very last moment, he gets that medical exemption because the organizers mm. know uh, the Australian Open without Novak Djokovic, who is not injured, uh, wouldn't be uh, the same. Then also... The EFL Cup. Uh, Austin will, you know, probably give us more updates. We are hearing Liverpool is calling for uh, their semi-final tie against Arsenal to be postponed because of COVID-19 um, cases. Austin will help us uh, with that. We'll also look at the other semi-final. Uh, it's going to be uh, Tottenham, Chelsea. We'll talk about that. So that's the outlook of uh, the show uh, tonight. And so let me pass uh, debating back to. Austin and uh, talk about players being expected. Um, I'm, I'm very sure none of the players still expected are abroad. Maybe there's somewhere in Nigeria cooling off, uh, visiting the family members. Uh, I'm very sure maybe if we can get a call through to the camp, probably everybody is there. But, but let's start from there, Austin. Um, 23 out of 28, well, out of 27, because the status of Odion Igalo not not really clear as of this point, but not a bad number um, with, with five days ago. Yeah, it was a rush this morning, you know, as a last night was about 13 or 14 skipper I got into this morning. They just started a rival of Kelly and Acho, uh, Wilfred Ndidi, and some of the other there. So, uh, Austin Aguavon and his team, they would like it, you know, um, having uh, the compliment of um, these players, you know, so they'll be able to fine-tune tactics here and there. So, uh, let's just hope that uh, the remaining five that they expect to but, um, this is where uh, you take whatever you have. And some of the players in camp already confirmed Francis Uzo, John Nobu for the goal pass, Daniel Akben, Maduka Okoye, all in camp, you know, and um, guys, there still talks of ah, what I will do with four goalkeepers. You know, they calm down. It's for it's for the technical crew. They know why they're having four goalkeepers. The defenders, the cap, she doesn't have as guy. All right, uh, just like Austin was saying. We have Chidezi Awazi and Kenneth Omeru uh, all in that list. They're in camp. Olu Hashemilogo Ajayi from West Bromwich Albion. You have William Truce Ekong, um, plays for Watford. Olalua, you know, plays for
place of Torino in Italy. These are the defenders. Said is in the Olisenda, place of Orlando Pirates in the South Africa, the Premier Soccer League. These are the defenders already in camp. Midfielders, Frank Koyenka, place of Brentford. Wilfred in the Leicester City. Shidera, Juke, a place in Russia. Kelechi Wakali place in Spain. A lot of people have said, uh, if you're looking for creativity, it might come from that direction. We'll see. Ahmed Musa, the captain of the team. Henry Oyekuru, a late call-up. Uh, you also have uh, Mosi Simon, Sadiq Kumar, Taiwo Awoni, and Alex Iwobi, plays for Everton in England. Of course, um, for the forwards, you still have Kelechi Yanacho, Peter Olainka, and... Uh, that he plays uh, for a club in the Czech uh, Republic, Slavia, Praha. Uh, that's where he plays. Let's look at the list of the players still being expected in camp uh, as of as at press time. Uh, before we came on to the studio, uh, let's give to you that list. The players still being expe expected. Tyrone Ibui uh, still being expected. Jamilu Collins also still being expected. Joseph Ayodelia Aribo, plays for Gla Glasgow Rangers, still be expected. Samuel Chikueze plays for Villarreal. Or Dion Judy Gallo, um, his status now. Uh, some question marks. Yes. Uh, there are issues about some clauses uh, in his contract. Uh, at, at some yeah. point, he said he wasn't going to play international football mm -hmm. yeah. anymore. So uh, we'll see. Uh, so, uh, so Austin, that, that's, those are the players uh, in camp. Uh, before we listen to uh, Augustin uh, Guevon, um, can they shed a little light on the Odioni Gallo situation? Yeah, you know, Johnny Allo, it's pretty um, complicated. He, uh, at, the, at the time he was joining his new team, Al Shabab, he had already told them that he has retired from international football. I uh, you know clubs, that's what they want to hear, so they know that they have you close to them. And then he got out of that, you know, retirement. He has played for the team. And... Um, so now it's it's looking it's it's not looking good that Adjoye Halo is going to join the team. I've been trying to reach the striker, sent him messages. Hopefully he's going to reply so we get to know the true situation of things. Also waiting to hear from Baba Femi Raji. But I also know that uh, they've been trying to make contact with the young Akimi Amo, you know, um, uh, who might just, you know, jo join the team to replace Odioni Yalo. But I really wish and hope that Odioni Yalo will make it to the team because, yeah, I mean, we need his experience, you know. If we check this team, most of them are just making the debut at the competition. No disrespect. They're professionals, but sometimes you just need persons who've been there done that you know mm -hmm. and have good experience in the bag and Ojani Alu brings that so we just hope that uh, we get proper updates and clarity uh, as regards the situation and we'll get to tell our viewers but let, I mean, let's talk about what everyone talks about whenever um, we're having this sort of situation inviting players to the camp of the Super Eagles why are there no home-based players, particularly players in the Nigeria Professional Football League? John Noble, uh, goalkeeper for Aimba, is the only player from the MPFL that is in this current Super Eagles team to the AFCON. Interim manager, Augustin Aguavon, has been trying to explain why we don't have MPFL players in the team. Let's listen to him. We'll come back, Ken, they will react to it. Don't go anywhere. I've always been an advocate of home-based players. And... When I was announced to be the coach of this team, and the final list was going to be submitted on, by the, on the 29th of December. And our league started when? 17, 18? Good. Let Keshi, may so rest in peace, had a couple of home days in his team then. They had a whole lot of friendly games within and outside the country. And if I take like two or three or four home base players, I know that are capable of playing right now. And there is no friendly game to do anything. It might backfire. You know, actually, I wanted to bring about six of them in here, but they, but they are not on the, in the 40 man list. So how do you just bring them in here and ask them to go home? We actually had a conversation on the phone, but I think to just leave it like that, I think it's better for now. Regrets, but there's no serious time. If there was time to bring in them, to bring them in and then play two or three friendly games, I would have done that. Players late arrival in camp is not deliberate. We know they all involved in your different leagues. Uh, Jamila Collins, yes, something beyond our, uh, what we can handle, uh, if you know what I mean, but it should be arriving tomorrow. Okay, what's your name? Oh, Daniel Gallo, yeah, we're still on it. I, I, up to last night, it's 
the club is proving very tough for whatever reason. And uh, myself and the general coordinator, Emi Piacho, still spoke about an hour ago. And if, if I can stay that now, if nothing happens, we don't have a positive news by 5 p.m., we'll replace it. Tough. It is what it is. We we'll wait and we don't get the sort of progress we want from what Johnny Allo. Interim manager Augustine Aguavan says he will be replaced. Well, let's go to the crux of the matter, and that's the non inclusion of home base players in the team. Uh, Kendi, when, when Coach Gernot Raw was in charge of the team, that was a major criticism he faced. Why are you not inviting MPFL players? He's out of the way. We have Austin Aguavan, who is a homeboy, and it's still the same old, same situation. I think the only Probably reason I can give for Iguavon is the proximity as of when he was pronounced to be the coach and him, you know, uh, getting to even the list were already out, you know, the provisional list at first and all of that. But the simple question I ask is from what he said, saying no friendlies and all of that, these guys have played some couple of matches. Okay, let me take Aimba, Rivers, Aqua United, Bayosa United. Let's put them in mind and look at how many games they've played build up to now. This all, um, some players couldn't make it. Last week, it was four players, you know, that got substituted. Uh, um, Dennis, Osime, uh, Sanusi, and um, you, uh, the, the last one, uh, all getting she foreign the line. players. I felt we had enough. Look at the inclusion of John Noble. Just like the way it was with Ezenwa some, uh, you know, some times ago. Check the statistics of goalkeepers in the MPFL. And John Noble does not even stand in top five. And then he gets called up always. Is it that um, when you get into that mix, whether you do good or not, if you're calling a player, two players from the MPFL, are they even the best? Then you give me very flimsy reasons for not calling them at some point. I felt the five that should be coming in because Kafa told you 23 is what we'll cater for, but you can have five because of COVID, but you'll be the one checking out for those ones. I think you can do yourself a lot of good by not bringing in the foreign... I, so many reasons just always pop up. Now we're talking of the... Uh, 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 Tyrone he was still waiting. No disrespect to these players, but I feel one or two players from the MPF can do at least um, a, a semblance of what they can also do with the national team. I just feel so many but, times um, but, it's easier can for they, us to can just they, let me just can they, Okay, okay. Can they, can they, let, me just, let me just jump in. I understand everything you're saying, and we can, we can take this stance you are giving because we love the league, we promote the league. But did he make a point when he talked about the stability, the consistency of our league football, because he compared it to 2013 when Coach Keshi had on best players. Did he make a good point with that, saying we haven't been stable with the way we run our league football? He did. And I must commend him for that. That was a, a good point, a good angle. But Austin, there is always a build-up. If you ask Osime, in, in um, uh, 2019, Osime was like a passerby at the AFCON. He gained one, two, three things from watching those guys playing, from watching Igalo playing. He had to build hunger from 2019 to be here. Uh, unfortunately, he cannot be a part of it. Was saying, bring these players. Let them have a feel. Let them have a look. They will play. They might not play. But some two years or three years from today, these players you built now, will now be one of those that we can easily call. Yes, we understand if you play two months, three months, very good at the MPFL, one of the things you want to do is play abroad. But we're saying the guys who are so good now, let them have a feel of being part of the team. Trust me, we need 11 players on the pitch. Probably, at the most, we get to do substitute. We'll use eight substitutes. And we're going with 28. Okay, in some... Maybe we might end up with 27 if the audio the gallo issue is not. But we're saying if you're to play 11 and maybe use 18 at the end, eight mm. players plus 11, mm. that's 19 players. What happens to the rest? A lot of players will just go there and it will be sightseeing and all of that. But for the MPFL players, it would have been another way to expose them, to take them to another level from what they are, they are used to. And it will go a long way to help us. There are so uh, many situations. Like it is said, the whole bro on call this player, mm, call that player. Mm. Do you know that the Moroccans, the Egyptians, 
would almost likely not have so much of it. If they had kept Salah, that Salah won't come. These guys still have a plan B. Look at the uh, the Harab Cup that Kende, just you need to You need to... Kende, Kende just sold your, just sold your thoughts right there. I love this conversation. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, home-based players or not, professionals in camp, whether Dioni alone makes it to the team or not, captain of the team, Akbed Musa, is confident in the Super Eagles with Zuel. Well, listen to him when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Stay. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. In each tournament, you you see there is some new players, but I don't think there is any new player that is not with us since from day one. So we have been together. We know each other. It's just a little bit of something that the coach have to add in the team. So for me, saying that are we ready? I think we are. We are. We are ready because we have played a lot of matches together. So it's just like I say. In every team, you just see new boys, one or two. So I don't think that is another any problem in the team. So we are 100% ready. Thank God we have everyone in the team now. Inshallah, we are going to Cameroon. We are not going there to see the beauty of the country. We are going there because I think the last game in the qualifiers that we have against Benin, we talk to ourselves, we are not just qualifying to the AFCON. We are qualifying to the AFCON to come back with a trophy because I remember back then, like you say, two of us in the team, it's a very good reception to see coming back to Nigeria with the happiness, winning that trophy that is going to add. As a situation that we have, we have in our country, now winning this AFCON will make our country one of the happiest, more happiest, I would say, country that. And inshallah, with the boys that we have, we can do it. ready, they're confident. He says just a little something, something here and there, and then everything will be fine. Uh, Kende, uh, uh, did that renew the assurance and confidence you have uh, for the Super Eagles? I've, I've always had confidence in this team. I Probably as a Nigerian or for someone who has seen a lot of our football, I understand that um, everybody who had done that jersey wants to do a whole lot. But we're just saying, probably with the balance, something like what Keshi had. You have the players who are ready to, you know, be skillful, all the paparazzi, and then you would have some who are ready to do the dirty, you know, the dirty works. You understand African football is one of those, um, you know, one of those football that needs energy, that needs grit. This is what these guys bring sometimes. I was listening to um, Ikesho Rumo, uh, Femi Okpabumi, with uh, Ifanyu Deze. And they were saying, 
they were telling me the story of uh, 2002 there about how the likes of uh, Okocha and Ifan Udeze uh, with, uh, I'm trying to remember, how they made him walk. Because he's the young player, he's not so exposed, and they'll tell him, you have to do this. Huh? He did it with joy. Because he knew what he was, uh, what he wanted. He knew what he was chasing for. Yeah. They are more established, and mm -hmm. this is what we're saying. We need a bit of those balance. We are not one of those countries that we can boastfully say we've got proper players in every department. So when we get the players who are a bit hungry, who wants to step into the next level? I watched Joe Aribo recently. I watched the Onyibo wall, uh, Leon <laughs> Balogo and Truste Kong. I'm you know, seeing a lot you of, know. you know, too, too relaxed, too confident. You know, um, you know it, it, it gets me really worried sometimes. Can, can it it makes me feel like the confidence should, uh, you know, be dropped by we journalists or the fans on the street. All right. I, I share your sentiment in, in some areas, but, but I'll shy away from giving knocks to certain players. But I do get your point. We, we need to put players who are hungry for success. Uh, is a necessary ingredient. Well, it appears our Super Eagles players are very confident. They can win the title. Let's listen to uh, Trust Ekong uh, talking about the chances of the Super Eagles of winning the Africa Cup of Nations. Yeah, I think this is a, a difficult time for everybody, you know. Um, not just for football. I think it's a challenging time in any walk of life. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy and grateful that we're still here today because in the last few weeks there was a lot of question marks about if we could play the tournament. Um, but I'm very happy that Cameroon clarified all of that. So, and the difference is going to be also maybe with the, the fans, the people allowed to travel to come and watch us play. I think for us on the pitch, it won't change anything. We'll still be working in the same way. Everyone in here, this is going to be our, our bubble. Uh, and I think all the players here, we've been tested so much. So. Uh, yeah, we're not really worried about it. Uh, myself and some other players had COVID as well in the recent weeks, so um, yeah, I think we're going to be um, you know, free of COVID for a little while because of the antibody. So we're not worried about that. Uh, we're all very young, fit, healthy, and uh, yeah, we just focused on the tournament now. Um, and I think that COVID is just part of life in general, so it's uh, nothing new for us at the moment in time. Yeah, a lot. I think we've uh, luckily we have many players here that scored goals uh, for their club, their form. And I think that's the beauty about tournament football is that there's always new players that will stand up and show themselves. Uh, last AFCON, Victor only played, I think, in the very last game. And uh, nobody really spoke about Victor, everyone spoke about Igalo. And this tournament, I'm sure there'll be new players that were standing up as well um, to, to fill those shoes. Of course, we're going to miss Victor very much. He's, he's the, probably one of the hottest strikers in the world right now. Um, but yeah, we can't put any, uh, any pressure on any other players and we can't feel bad for, um, you know, or, or um, you know, feel bad for Victor for not being here because he tried his maximum to be here. I know that he struggled with his injury, uh, but it's unfortunate he's not here. Um, but yeah, all the boys that are here with us in the camp and the squad are going to have to fill that, that void. And I'm yeah, very confident that we've got enough players to do that. All right. Um, we're going to make our comments on what uh, William Trist Ekon says, uh, but there's an interesting thing I want us to also quickly listen to. Uh, people will tell you that goals win you games, defense wins you titles. Yeah. So let's listen to the people who will form a part of that defense, the goalkeepers, the last line of any defense. Uh, let's listen to two of them, Maduka Okoe and, of course, John Nobu, uh, talking about the Super Eagles chances at the AFCON and what to expect. Uh, like, uh, like right now, this, everybody's spirit is high and uh, everyone is willing to work. And with the cooperation in the camp, I strongly believe that we are going to leave the trophy for Nigeria. Yeah, for me, I feel happy because it's the dream of every Nigeria player to represent the country. So when I saw the name, my name on the list, I was so happy and I returned all glory to God for that. Yeah, I know uh, it's really going to affect us, but we are professionals. We know our job, so we are going there to put in our best and make the country proud. Yeah, we, I strongly believe with the quality of players Nigeria have on ground. Now, everybody's informed. We are doing well in our various club sides, so I strongly believe that we'll qualify from the group stage. Uh, there's, the spirit is coming together gradually. Um, we are still uh, trying to um, wait for other players to come, which I believe that uh, by the end of tomorrow, we should have more players in camp. But so far, the spirit has been fun and uh, it has been together. Well, you know, Nigeria is a big uh, country, so if you happen to be even in the... A 50 man list, you should be grateful that uh, it's a great privilege. So, for me, it's a privilege, you know, to be uh, on the 28 man list. All right, that was actually um, Daniel Opey and John Noble, uh, both guys um, 
speaking to a man, obviously very delighted to, I mean, you would almost think it was Daniel Lapay's first appearance that he shows everybody wants to play for their national team. Kendi, let me come to you before we um, go back to Austin. Um, it's too early to start thinking about whether or not we can win the Nations Cup. Yeah. But there's an interesting question uh, I'd like to ask you. Do we have any goalkeeper or of the quartet that we have? Do we have any of them that inspires confidence in you? And if anybody asks you, who would be your number one? Uh, speaking as a fan, yeah. Speaking as I know you're a journalist, but speaking as a fan. Yeah, I think um, in recent time, the growth of Madukaoko interests me. Um, as of when he broke into the national team of the uh, the Nigerian national team, the Super Eagles, he was playing in the you know fourth division and, and yeah. all of that. It got us worried, but the growth went on, and then he found himself at uh, Spartak Rotterdam, where uh, semblance of good growth. Now we're hearing uh, some teams uh, cutting in, in in England right there, which is super super interesting. Now, if you're looking at also build for goalkeepers, he's got that build uh, very much, but. If we want to look at probably what you've gathered with the national team, I think Uzo has been to the World Cup. Uzo has seen a whole lot. Uzo has been eye to eye with Lano Messi. I think you can get you know higher than that uh, where you face Lano Messi in goal. So uh, maybe Uzo has also got experience with the national team. For Maduka Okoye, it seemed like the toast of the moment of all our goalkeepers. Daniel Akpeyi and uh, uh, John Nobo will fall you know behind. Uh, before in the pecking stood. order. Yeah, in pecking order. In your pecking order. In my pecking order, <laughs> okay. yes. Uh, you said I, I, my opinion. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify I that. Be, I should be a fan of yeah, history. So. I wanted to clarify yeah. that. <laughs> okay. All right, let's let's quickly go to Austin for um, any other... We're done with the spikers, but probably any other things Austin um, wants to add on um, the Super Eagles. Uh, I like the confidence with which um, Daniel Akpeyi and John Noble spoke. Remember uh, when... Um, Kali Keme left the team. We were worried as regards goalkeeping. We kept asking questions, but I think over time now, these guys have realized that they need to step up. They need to do something so that we don't get to miss, you know, um, anyone that is not in the team. And I, I like what Kende also said about the consistency that Maduka Ope has shown. And we're beginning to also get some maturity. I think I just want them to be more commanding. They should be... You know, they should be more vocal, you know, control the defense line yes. properly. And, and, I, and I think will, they will be good, good at the AFCON. Now, but just a quick update. Um, no, no, no new arrivals uh, in the camp of the Super Eagles. So if you look at the time in Nigeria, it's about 9.33 p.m. So it means uh, no one will be able to get in tonight. So hopefully tomorrow we'll get someone. But let's have in mind that Austin Aguavoya said by 5 p.m. if they don't get to hear from Odioni Yalo. And that's it. All right, quick one um, from your hand. There's a lot of talk about the AFCON being disrespected. Claudio Ranieri said, no, I didn't disrespect the AFCON. Watford and the NFF talk about... Ian Wright had to uh, put out a social media message to talk about his annoyance about how the tournament has been um, disrespected. So I want to quickly get your thoughts because I'm very sure you you feel the pulse of a lot of people around around here. Some people... Some have said the arguments that some Africans are making are sentimental, but, but from your hand, do you feel that there's a kind of disrespect for uh, the AFCON, maybe by European clubs, um, European journalists? Sebastian Halla was asked the other day if he was going to honor the invitation for his national team, and he was asking them if I was an European, were well, you going to ask me that kind of question? So he says, for sure, I'm honoring the invitation. And that was what he said, you know, like, how dare yeah, you ask a player if he's going to, you know, honor an invitation from, from his country. Uh, yeah, I've been speaking to some colleagues and um, they share the same, the, the same views that the, the AFCON has been disrespected for a long time. And last week, I mean, I told you maybe at the Confederation of Africa, football need to do uh, much more to gain their respect. I think they need to be more assertive. Uh, they should work with a unity of purpose. It, it, it goes to show that 
our administrators of football in Africa need to be more united, you know, just so these people, we know that we know what we are doing. I love the fact that some top players in Africa have actually shown that they love the competition, you know. Just imagine, for instance, if Mo Salah decides not to come to the AFCON, these coaches will jump on that and then use it to say one or two things. Or Sadio Mane, um, Edward Mendy, right after the, the, the Super Sunday, they got they got into the plane to go honor the, their, their country. So, yes... Uh, with what our colleagues are saying here, they, they, they want the Confederation of African Football to do more in, you know, building the image of the yeah. AFCON. There's a, there's a vibe behind competitions. You know, you start feeling it when the Euros is coming. If Tottenham is playing the biggest competition of their life, Son will get into the plane to go and represent his country when they need him, you know, and, and that's what it is, respecting the motherland. And I've said it. And I'll say it again, no matter the respect a player is having at club level, if you lack national team football relevance, then your respect is not complete. And yeah. that's why if I see Manuel Dennis, the statement he made about uh, staying back to football was what a hard club and club. It's the Africa be on yeah. standby whether or not they are calling you the first time be on standby and say whenever my country needs me i will, I will jump on this call up i think that's what we, not, we need to start doing you know from right. home so that these guys will not disrespect us anymore all right a good one that's a good place to leave it uh we're pressed for time but let's go to nigeria professional football league since uh today is the first time we're having the show we have to go back to the results of matches played over the weekend and take some reactions. Let's give to you matches played over the weekend, match day four to be precise. And uh, let me run through the results quickly as I can. Shooting stars secured a 1 0 victory over Kasuna United. Bombay United beat Lobby Stars 3 0. Abia Warriors uh, played a 1 0 draw with Quara United. Plenty United. Dakara FC played a 1 0 draw with Rebel Stars. Plenty United. Uh, Hartland, Hartland 3 0. That's why United. Defeated Aqua United 2 0. Rangers International put four goal spots, uh, Niger Tornadoes. Rivers United, Bellagulas draw with Sunshine Stars. Ricky Torres defeated MFM 3 0. And Cado Pilas, uh, the game uh, you saw during the break, uh, defeated Aimba 2 0. All right, so that's it. Let's quickly take some reaction, quickly as we can, from the game uh, between 3SC and Casina. United. Let's just quickly do that. We'll come back to take some more reactions uh, from the other matches. I think it was a better performance from the game against Aqua United. We we're able to possess the ball. We we're able to be in control most of the time. When we have the ball, when we do not have the ball, we we're able to be in control. And gradually, the boys are settling down to playing in the MPFL. And I am, we are very happy as well that, yes, we created chances today, but at least we're able to score one of those chances. From now on, we hope that the team can improve on the aspect of converting chances. Uh, just an uh, individual uh, mistake that uh, gave the home team the, the, the goal. If not, uh, we will have picked something from this game. And uh, we will still go back and uh, continue watching from where we stop. I think uh, we have an injury problem in the attacking line. Uh, Rashid is just playing his second game in the, in the league now. The league is still early. We have room for improvement. We have a lot of new players in the team. So I think uh, with this game, you can see that uh, there is improvement from the Rivers game. We lost 3-0 in the, in the Rivers game. You know, even, even the distance even the distance from Casina to, to Ibadan can affect anything. So it's not easy for a player, uh, for a player to give you a high, intense, 90 minutes. It's very, very difficult. All right, so that's it. Uh, reactions you listen to uh, the 3SE manager and, of course, his counterpart from um, Casina United. All right, so let's uh, quickly move on. Other matches, Nasra United, we'll just show you uh, the clips. Uh, Nasra United uh, beat Aqua United 2 0. Aqua United started the season very well, but, you know, I. They, they lost this one on match before. Quick one uh, before we leave the MPFL all, all together. Uh, of course, we get Austin's thoughts as well. But um, those two matches, we're focusing on your, your thoughts on them. Tracy getting their win yeah. and uh, Aqua losing on the road. Yeah, um, the, the, the Aqua loss is actually a shocker for me. Um, not because they lost, but at, at the manner at which you know uh, they were they, they, they were beaten, I think it got me worried. And then for three SC, good one. I saw the Mammoth crowd giving them a win uh, for the first time. Uh, they they had a draw first in that field. Now they are getting a win. 
Well, probably uh, they are showing us that fans, uh, you know, have their own effect it and matters. they can be, you know, as uh, coordinated as possible. I saw a coordinated fan and they pushed on the team up until they got that goal. Fantastic. All right, very fantastic. Let's take a look at the NPFL table and Austin, as usual, um, we give us his analysis on the NPFL table. Most of the time, he's spot on with what is going on with the table. So I'll pass the bit to Austin and uh, talk us through um, after match day four. That's it after match day four. Remo Stars still on beating, still on top of the table. Surprise package of the season so far. Uh, let's see what they can do. Uh, if they can keep this going till about maybe March day 10. Uh, Rangers, courtesy of that big win uh, on March day 4, moved to third on the law with seven points. Aqua United suffered their first defeat of the season. Yeah. It's beginning to show that they struggle whenever they go to Lafayette. Last season, they were winning, I think, they were leading 1-0 and towards the nine minutes of the game, they lost 2-1. Shooting Stars recorded their first win of the season also. So um, it's, it's looking good for some teams. Just the first... Uh, it's just the, the, the first chapter, so our teams are beginning to find a way to get into it and, you know, uh, get up the ladder. But it's a good win for uh, Wicked Tourist. Also, Dakada, uh, as I mentioned, uh, well, they're owned by Remo Stars. Sunshine Stars, let's mention, though they're still struggling, Rivers United couldn't beat them uh, at home. So, uh, we'll wait to see what match the five will give us here. All right, that's it. So... Um, we're coming to your end uh, right about now. I'm going to stay <laughs> actually your end till the end of the show. So what's the update? Um, London Derby tomorrow, Chelsea and Tottenham. And we also yeah. hear that Arsenal is, um, I mean, Liverpool wants the Arsenal game called off. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, so yeah, Austin, because your thoughts, of, yeah. Um, COVID yeah, uh, the game between um, Liverpool and um, and um, us now. Liverpool have said, look, because of the number of COVID nineteen cases that the they can't they, they have called for a postponement of that of that game. So waiting to hear from uh, the authorities, you know, and the, the, the statement released by the club I mentioned that uh, the consideration that led to that led to the application for the EFL uh, is the need for traveling supporters to be given as much notice as possible in terms of any, you know, if you want to postpone it, let the fans know they shouldn't be told a day before, and that's why they made this application on time. Uh, but um, it's, going, it's going to be an interesting one when Chelsea takes on Tottenham also in the EFL uh, Cup. Um, Chelsea, we know how they are going with the season, so um, when you win a trophy, one way or the other, it, it, it boosts morale. And I'm sure Antonio Conte will be saying, uh, if he can't get the league with Tottenham, then let, let them win one trophy and, and, and the, 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 the EFL Cup will be a good one. Romelu Lukaku, we're hearing that there's some stability now. And so uh, everyone seems to be happy at Stamford Bridge. So we'll get to see when, when they take on Tottenham in that one. But let's take reactions. Uh, Tukul has been, has been talking. So let's listen to him and I'll come out and talk some more. You know, make him comfortable. Let me get, let me get Kendi's reaction. Um, it's a London derby, uh, but you, you could tell that it's important that everybody is happy in the team and that's what Tukul is trying to do with the Romelu Lukaku situation. Yeah, um, that's what he's trying to do. Just trying to stabilize the team. Now he's making the players understand after the closed door meeting, we are cool with Lukaku which translates to telling you guys that you need to be cool also when you get on the pitch. Uh, because the last thing you need, uh, they have a lot of injury worries. The last thing you need now is having divided home amongst the few players who've got left to, to execute that game. And then if you go to the game itself, it's a, it, it has every recipe to be a monster game. Conte is coming back to Chelsea and all of that. Also, you know, they just want to, uh, uh, like um, Guardiola will say, uh, the early the early final, which is the EFL Cup, that's the by February you should have rounded that up. If you get to win that trophy, it could spur you on to winning more because the test they have a direct taste of what victory means, of what lifting a trophy you know feels like. And you will say, okay, I've got a chance mm -hmm. in the FA mm -hmm. Cup, I've got a chance in the league. Why not go all out and get that? So everybody wants to have a yeah. feel of that first trophy. All right, everybody wants to have a feel of um, their trophy. Hopefully. 
all of those issues have been uh, sorted. Our party shot on the show tonight will be about the world number one, Novak Djokovic. Uh, we would have loved to talk about Naomi Osaka. Let me just mention, um, of course, she says her mind is right. She's, she loves playing tennis and she will give her all. We'll talk about that maybe tomorrow. But Novak Djokovic, well, in the eye of the storm, uh, he's got that exemption. Um, a lot of people are happy that he will be at the Australian Open. Some others uh, are thinking that maybe he's getting it because he is Novak Djokovic. But, Kenny, uh, we're pressed for time. Your, your thoughts on this one? I'm happy he's going to be there. Yeah. Uh, but this is not what they will do for everybody. Yes, <clears throat> this is not. He's not Gal Monfields. Yeah. He's not Mina, you know. He's not, <laughs> you know, he's not Jack Cena. He is Novak. He's Novak Djokovic. He's world number one. This guy is massive. He's huge. And I can remember and last defending week. defending champion. And the defending champion. Nine times he had won the Australian Open. Nick Kyrgios, it could be a hothead, but he said something last week. He said, if the big three Don't are play. not in Australia, it will be disastrous. Now, one is already gone, uh, Roger Federer. For Nadal, we understand, even at training, Nadal could pick up an injury and he will be out. Then there was COVID. For Novak, was still dealing daily. So it looked like there is a comma on the remaining two players that look like available. So he was saying, Australia wants these guys, not just, you know, for the tennis itself, they the bring tennis a world of, wants, wants them. They bring a lot of fanfare. And then uh, no, they've confirmed Nadal. They want, we mm -hmm. all want Nova Djokovic. Right. And there is also the 21st Grand Slam. Let's see how this world will go right. in 2021. Maybe it will surpass. But the exemption. It maybe it will surpass. <laughs> maybe we'll get more explanation on that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, Katie, I want to thank you for your time on the show. The conversation never ends. We always take it, it, it out. It never does. But I want to say thank you. <laughs> thank you very, here. very it's much. All right. That's the show today. Uh, we hope that you've been able to enjoy all that we've brought to you on the show. We'll be back again tomorrow. We'll take you on a trip across the money spinning world of sports from Lagos in Nigeria. I'm Yemi Adebayo saying bye bye now. In London, I'm Austin Okonapan. And everything you do, remember to keep talking sports. Bye for now.